All right, we turn now to the Washington swamp where Joe Biden is, quote, confident that a deal will be reached on the debt ceiling so we don't default as a country. So with just two weeks to go, is Mr. My Way or the Highway Joe Biden finally negotiating or is it too little too late? Here with more, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is with us. Mr. Speaker, thank you. You know, thank you, sir. I, I, over 100 days ago, I started reaching out to you and saying, Mr. Speaker, any update on the debt ceiling? Mr. Speaker, any update? You had that one meeting 104 days ago, uh, and Joe Biden said he would not negotiate. You reached out to him almost daily, if I'm not mistaken. So you knew the debt ceiling deadline was coming. You passed a really responsible bill. Tell me how the negotiations are going, and do you think your caucus is willing to give up a really good bill in exchange for Joe Biden betting that you'd never get that bill passed? Well, first of all, Sean, thank you for your help, and thank you to all the viewers, and especially to all the Republican members in the House and in the Senate, because they have heard, held firm together. You are right. On February 1st, I sat down with the president saying, let's negotiate a debt ceiling increase, but also change the trajectory of the money that we're spending. we got to stop just this runaway spending. And he ignored us for 105 days. But because we united, we were able to pass a bill, we got in where we had a meeting. The president said all along he would not negotiate, and you had to just increase the debt ceiling. He and Chuck Schumer said that. Yesterday was a breakthrough. They acknowledged that it's no longer a position they can hold. And now they've appointed two of their uh, administrative people to work with our staff, to work to try to find and solve this problem. But, you know, we've been very clear, Sean. Um, you can't keep raising the debt ceiling. It's like having your child have a credit card. And year after year after year, you keep reaching the limit, and you just keep expanding it, expanding it. Well, there comes a point where your credit card now costs you more than all the money you make in a year, bigger than your entire economy. You're responsible for paying it, but shouldn't you actually look how you're spending money? So a limit, save, grow. We limit how much we spend in the future. We save money by pulling back that COVID money that wasn't spent. We put in work requirements. This is only for able-bodied people with no dependents. It helps them take them from poverty to jobs, helps them get out of that poverty mess. And then we look at places that we could cut the red tape so we could build things in America again. We become energy independent. That's just a few of the things. We've also, Sean, remember what we put in here, cutting those 87,000 IRS agents. A lot of good ideas to be able to raise the debt ceiling, but actually put an economy that's stronger, less dependent on China. Mr. Speaker, you were able, you were able to pass this by a margin of only two votes. You don't have that yeah. big a margin to play with in the House. So you That's only true. have 14 days to go, and I think the budget is really responsible. You raise the debt ceiling. You bring spending back to 2022 levels. You reduce baseline budgeting increases to, what, 1 percent a year. Yes. Uh, the CBO scores it out at $4.8 trillion saved over 10 years. That, to me, is fiscal responsibility and all the other things that you mentioned. Now, let's say that Biden says, this is my final offer, and you bring that deal back to your caucus, do you think you're going to get a majority in your caucus to go along with this late-minute deal after he wouldn't even talk to you for 100 days? Sean, I believe we can if we come to a good agreement, because think of this. We, the president said he wasn't going to negotiate. We were just going to raise the debt ceiling. First of all, we have just now been able to have a victory. The president can no longer say that. So, no, the debt ceiling will not get raised with no changes. If we get a fundamental change where we get a cap in what we're spending, that's trillions of dollars saving. If we change the directory where we get work requirements, that's the biggest welfare reform we've had since Bill Clinton signed the bill. If we're able to get savings where we're spending less, that will be the biggest cut since Ronald Reagan. This is an idea that Republicans have stuck together in the House and the Senate. We're going to have to realize when we can declare victory and show the American public when we stick together, we can win and make America stronger. All right. I think in large part, and I got to give credit to your colleagues in the Senate, they have stood yes. by you and your bill and said, no, it'll be Speaker McCarthy and Joe Biden that negotiate this. You have 43 uh, senators uh, that signed a document saying they'd stick by your bill. Uh, John Kennedy didn't sign it, but he said he would stick by your bill. So that's really 44. Uh, so it's not going to happen. They're not going to get a bill out of the Senate. Nope. Basically, it's going to be your bill and any changes you might make. Where might you think about 
making changes to what I think was a really good bill that, that you passed in the House. Look, Sean, that was a really good bill in the House. We have to pass the House and the Senate. We're sitting with the president now. We told him we have to spend less. We told him we're going to negotiate only off our bill. And so we're sitting in the room trying to get this done, where we can get this done to be able to move forward to stop our inflation, get us off the dependency of China, and get America working again. We combine that together. Republicans have shown that we can lead, just like on the border. The president ignored this problem. He ignored the border. But no, we also passed H.R. 2, secure our border, and we're looking to places that could we put something of that in this bill as well. And by the way, inflation is transitory. Um, I will <laughs> say this, Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the fact that you're at this late hour willing to negotiate with him after he abandoned you and the entire Republican majority in the House. Uh, however, I will say that if there is a default for the first time in the history of this country, that will be on Biden. That will be Biden's default. The Biden default. It yeah. will be his. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.